Hey, Jack! What? Wake up, there's a camera! Where? Here! Smile! All right, today we're going to talk a little bit about one of the lizards that I find the most appealing pets in the lizard world. This is a bearded dragon. And lizards are reptiles. They are animals that don't depend on water as much as amphibians, but they certainly do need water. And one of the interesting things about these little baby dragons is when they are first born, they're not real swift about how to get water. So while we always put a water bowl in the cage with them, we don't expect them to go and drink it because they usually will just look at it and say, well, you know, I don't know what it is. They will drink moving water, and so it's not uncommon for them to go after droplets that are running down the inside of, of an aquarium. You're not going to have a drink this morning, are you? Lizards actually crawl out of their skin, and he's doing that, and what you see right here is a little bit of skin that he has shed from his leg. There's more coming off here on the base of his tail, and he will shed the skin all over his body when he's growing. That's always a good sign if you're looking at a, a baby uh, lizard. If you see it shedding its skin, that usually means that he's been eating a lot and he's growing well. As he gets older, you want to be sure that the skin sheds properly on his little feet so it doesn't build up. And as opposed to a snake where the sh skin sheds over the eye itself, our little lizards have eyelids and so they don't shed the covering over the eye itself. One of the things that I always want you to be aware of when you have a pet is hand washing and especially with the little reptiles many of whom do carry things that you really don't want to have on your hands particularly when you're eating. So when I've taken this little guy out I've usually washed my hands before I take him out so that I'm not giving him anything and I also go and wash my hands after I've had him out so that there's no question of anything going between us. If I'm sick, I generally do not handle my pets. I want them to have the greatest advantage of a clean environment and my sneezing is not going to help any of them, even if they cannot suffer from the same diseases we do. So hand washing, very important. Wash both before and afterwards for a healthy pet and a healthy relationship. You want to go and have some more to eat? We keep them in a 10 gallon tank at this size. They will get to be about 15 inches long and as you can see some of these are actually bigger than the others even though they were all hatched at the same time by the same local breeder. This guy is well on his way to being 15 or 18 inches long, at which point he'll really need a 55 gallon aquarium to be comfortable. Because these are not animals that climb a lot, you don't need to worry too much about height for them, although even though they're in an aquarium, which they can't climb up the sides of easily, you have to worry about the cords that are in the aquarium. And the cords go to two things. First of all, to the hot rock, or there may be a a heating pad under the cage because these guys need a lot of heat. They like it when it's 85 or 90 degrees and so one of the things that I always encourage people to have with them is a thermometer. If you tell me that your tank is room temperature, my question is always whose room, your room or my room? I want to know what the actual temperature is and if you have a basking area where you have a light that you leave on for them so that they get the advantages of sunlight, which is the UVB spectrum, they will usually bask underneath that. And the question then is, what's the temperature there? And it's, if it's 85 or 90, they're happy little guys. The fluorescent bulbs that we have now, uh, that are screw-in fluorescents, do have the UVB spectrum that they need for their calcium and vitamin D metabolism. In addition to the UVB, they need the calcium. And so when we are feeding them crickets, which we do as babies, we put them in a container where we can shake them up with some calcium powder so that the crickets get dusted with calcium and then when we put them into the tank for the, for the uh, lizards to eat, they eat both the cricket and 
the calcium. Let's see how these guys would like a couple crickets for breakfast. Whoop! Guess the answer was yes on that one. Yum! Nothing like a fresh cricket for breakfast. Now these guys don't just eat crickets. And so we have a lovely vegetable salad for them today. And one of the things that I do is finely mince. Today we have some kale, some dandelion, some green pepper, and some carrots. And I have chopped them all very fine. Now, as you see, the crickets are certainly what they like the best. And so what I'll do for the vegetables is add a couple of mealworms. And mealworms, as they move around, will cause the veggies to move around. Like every other, oop, <laughs> and, and be eaten. Like every other reptile, uh, these guys respond to motion. And as soon as I put that worm in the veggies, you saw that he not only got the worm, but he also got some of the veggies at the same time. So that'll draw their attention to it. As they get older, they eat fewer and fewer crickets and more and more veggies, which is nice, so that you don't have to worry about visiting the store every week to get your supply of crickets. The dandelions that we have today came both from the grocery store and from my front yard. I don't spray. I haven't sprayed since I moved into the house many years ago. These guys are wonderful pets for youngsters for two reasons. First of all, they never get too big like iguanas do, and so they're never more than about 18 inches long. And secondly, they're always very easy to handle. My favorite feature, however, is the fact that they always look to me like they're smiling. They have a very happy little face. They're very alert, as you can see, and as soon as I pick him up, he not only looks to see who's holding him, but he's listening to me. They have a reasonably good sense of hearing, but their vision is just a riot. Because they respond to uh, motion, that's why... Uh, what are you doing? Looking for a little bit of water? Well, let's try some spraying for you. We usually keep a spray bottle by the cage, and at least twice a day, we will spray the walls, and sometimes the lizards too, of the aquarium. And that's when they will do most of their drinking, actually, just going after the little droplets as they come down the walls. Bearded dragons, I think, are wonderful pets. Taking them outside in the sunshine, very good idea because then they are able to enhance their calcium and vitamin D metabolism out there. Providing a vitamin and mineral supplement on their crickets so you're sure they're getting an adequate supply is great. Decorating their cage is fine, especially if you're decorating it with plants that they can eat. And if there's aphids on the plants, why, what a delicious treat that is. We keep a paper towel in our cages because it's easiest for us to be sure that way that they have droppings, that our cage is very clean because we change the towel whenever it's necessary, at least once a week and sometimes every day when they're in a rapidly growing phase. And our little lizards may live for 15, 20, 25, 30 years. Native to Australia, so therefore you're never going to release them in the wild in the United States. If you have one that you can no longer keep, take it to your local shelter or to a pet store because as a member of the Maryland Association of Pet Industries, we guarantee to rehome any animal that you cannot keep. One way or another, we'll either refer you to a proper location, or sometimes we can find a new home for it. So come and visit Animal Exchange when you're in Rockville, and we'll be glad to show you these cute little baby bearded dragons.